I don't want to be too rote and say you guys look like a million bucks. I know that there was quite the celebration last night. What was it like for you guys to get to re-experience one of the best days of your lives surrounded by so many fans and former racers? Man, I mean, we, we kept talking about it. You know, Johnny wore a suit. I wore a suit. It felt like it was a wedding, you know, like having everyone around us, like one of the best days of our lives. And it's very rare that you get to experience something like that twice because we experienced it the first time surreal felt like a dream experience experiencing it the second time almost felt as exciting as the first time and everyone's screaming jumping up and down that was that I'm, I'm gonna replay that in my head just for fun yeah so let's talk about where it ended that energy level that brought you through to the final mat because when you did the glass blowing i think clearly it would be understandable if you got in your heads like this is it we're third place after all of that, but you were able to keep pushing through. What was sort of the mentality that you had? Cause I know that you guys have seemed to keep like a pretty cool composure the entire time, but I think it'd be understandable if this being the final leg with the stakes being a million dollars on the line, you might melt down like a piece of glass. Yeah. Yeah. And honestly we did, we were melting right alongside that glass for a little <laughs> bit of it. Um, the, yeah, I think we were at some points thinking, okay, this might be it. This could be third. And one thing that really helps is hyping the other one up when they're down. When Gregory and I lost that leg, stopping us from the five peat, mm. Gregory was pretty upset. And I was like, hey, you know what? We're still in this. Let's keep going. And when we were on our way to the final challenge, I was thinking this might be Joel and Garrett's day. And Gregory was really telling me there's still hope. We know we have that mental ability for a final challenge. We've seen the race. We know it's going to happen. And I think that really helped us get through. Yeah, so talk to me more about that memory. I mean, because we've seen racers, especially studious ones, be able to take note of everything that happened. But John, there was also a mention of like your, you know, near photographic memory. How simple was that challenge for you? Was it as easy as Joel and Garrett are ahead, but then you look at those kayaks and you say, oh yeah, I think we actually have a shot at this? I mean, we I, honestly, I... When we first got there, Joel and Garrett's wall, it was just a wall of kayaks. They had so many kayaks up. And so we knew that we had to really get to work. And like I said, Johnny has a great memory. So he started as I like started to read the challenge. And the biggest thing about that challenge, one, we knew that we had to get it done quick because we knew that we were behind. Two, we knew for a fact that once we gave it a first check, we were going to have to go back and debug and figure out what we did wrong. So the fact that we got on the first try, that was oh, yeah. almost as exciting as winning the race. You we, know, we were so ready to react. We were ready to like bring some kayaks down and we were waiting with bated breath. Every time Joel and Garrett got a check, we could hear check in the distance and just like waiting to see if it's going to be celebratory or if we still had more time. So that was stressful to say the least. But honestly, the hardest part about that challenge was were the pictures. I don't know if they showed it in the race, but mm -hmm. they, you know, you know, we had to say, you know, stock up or stock down, mm -hmm. whatever it was, like all the different challenge names. But then we also had to like match the photo of where the finish line was with the country. I don't know oh, if they that part, but no. that was difficult. Cause that's yeah. something, you, you know, like, especially in 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 you know the you know in asia a lot of the the temples look fairly similar so Those it's photos hard to weren't designate. too good yeah <laughs> yeah and, and, and you could and you could write down the names of detours and roadblocks you can't write down like a visual description of the pit stop you can't exactly you can, yeah you, i mean we have time on our hands and there are artists who play this game but it's going to take a lot of time to draw those places well, let's go from the end to the beginning here. I'm super curious. What was your guys' level of fandom with the Amazing Race? And what made you decide to make that leap from fans to possible racers? I got into the show through my girlfriend who loves everything and anything reality TV. And after watching the past like four or five seasons, um, got Gregory on board and we had some downtime last year and just put in our first application for the show. It just was a three minute video um not high production quality and uh just put it in and forgot about it until we got that call from la yeah and i feel like a lot of tv shows you look and you're like oh i could do that or i could do this so you know like you when you're sitting on your couch it looks easy and so we really wanted to test it out this seemed like one of those shows more than survivor more than big brother that we were like okay i actually think that we can do this like yeah. uh, that actually looks like something we can actually do pretty well at did you always want to race together or were you contemplating other partners? Touchy subject. Touchy subject. <laughs> <laughs> worked out well for you. <laughs> it, it worked out the best it could, but 
uh, my my girlfriend is the one who I intended to apply with for years, for four or five years. And it wasn't until, again, Gregory and I had literally 30 minutes of downtime that we actually like made the effort to put the application in. And it just happened to work out, honestly. So my girlfriend, like props to her for getting me on and then, you know, supporting me along the way. But if I could do it again, she's she's right there with me. We got to talk about this incredible streak. Like you said, you nearly completed the hand. You're missing the thumb, but still like incredible. Uh, really from like once you ended up heading to India, you did not finish lower than second place for the rest of the race, which is so tough to come by in a show that should when it succeeds like throw you so much into variance talk to me about that reaction to your success because i'm sure you don't want to get a big head about it but at the same time were you surprised by this were you uh meeting your own expectations by doing so well in the moment yeah i mean it, it was like i said before coming into the race we really wanted to see you know okay is this as easy as it looks on TV and the first few legs we were like okay maybe it's not that easy like maybe this is pretty hard but I mean it is it is pretty hard but I think the big thing for that second half of the race was really the switch between trusting taxi drivers to trusting our own directions you mm -hmm. know like most of the first parts and the first legs were all like tuk-tuks and taxis and boats and other people like we're relying on other people where we don't have much control but as soon as we were able to self-drive and get our own directions and figure it out all by ourselves then we got confident and then we knew that you know we were able to, to pull it out yeah so obviously you guys garnered a reputation for yourself especially as you continue to excel the machines as it were now, what's interesting is, like, you got through the U-turn. You know, you you benefited from Steven and Ali being bigger targets. But we certainly saw a couple times where teams were like, yeah, we're not really going to help them just because they're doing so well. I mean, Incredible. did you have a sense that you were the front runners? Did you feel like that affected the way you interacted with other teams? Yeah, it's easy to put ourselves in their shoes and say, okay, we should not help the people with a streak right now. And, like, there was also the possibility of another U-turn. And I think the teams were pretty explicit who they were thinking about. And, you know, Gregory and I were just like, hey, if we're getting first, maybe with a detour, we'll stay in the race. And then we were just ready to be we were prepared for anything. But thankfully, this wasn't the season <laughs> that had a, a late game U-turn this time. What I'm really intrigued by is your dynamic, because you two seem to just get on so well. And listen, I, I wouldn't ask if it wasn't for perhaps other teams that maybe showed a bit more friction. I mean, were there moments of conflict between the two of you on the race or was it really that you two were so simpatico throughout all 12 legs? I mean, I feel like the thing that works really well for Johnny and I is that in the moment when you're making a decision and when like the pressure is on, that's not the time to fight, right? Like, yeah. like you know, you can talk about it afterwards, you know, you can debrief post leg, but in that moment, you just got to make a decision. So sometimes, you know, we really started to learn, okay, Johnny's going to make this decision or I'm going to make this decision, or we're going to leave it up to chance and like randomly choose who's going to make the decision. So it, it, yeah, it just really came down to something like yeah, that. Yeah. Decision making for sure. And we had moments where there was friction, like, trying to decide whether or not to help teams in Germany, whether or not to keep going after teams had already explored a pass that they said was closed. Like, I remember these moments where it was like, Barry, I think we should do this. And it's Johnny, I don't think we should do this. And uh, just trying to resolve it as quickly as possible and knowing like whatever happens after that happens. So I'm intrigued that we heard a little bit from other teams about like, not alliances, I would say, but definitely looking out for each other. There was, of course, the infamous Franklin grouping between you and Morgan and Lena. Were you guys exploring that at all, given your sort of like cerebral approach to the game? We weren't. And we didn't see a pattern of alliances with the rest of the teams. Um, we were all just pretty friendly with each other. And I think when there's a lack of dissonance, it's hard for people to then find alliances. Um but yeah, I, I, it was it was unique in that way. There weren't too many. Yeah, yeah, there yeah. weren't too many alliances. And I mean, we really liked working with Morgan and Lena just because I mean, they reminded us of our sister, and you know, they, they, they're black and they're you know have similar relationships. So you know, we just loved hanging out with them. Um, we did find out later that there were some alliances between the teams, um, but yeah, we did. I don't think it came out too much, right? Like it didn't. We, it didn't show on TV, and it didn't really show on the show either. Like we didn't feel like. We were on the outs or anything. Yeah, and season 32 made me, like, aware of <laughs> like, the, the the social, like, uh, yeah, the social consequence to it. So, yeah. Where's the mine? That's all you were asking. Uh, 
Well, let, let's talk about representation here because I'll, I'll throw some numbers your way. You Please. are the first ever black all-male team to win the Amazing Race. Uh, you're the first black man to win since Uchenna, I believe, all the way back in season seven. You're the first all-black team to win since Keisha and Jen back in season 18. I mean, I know that representation was not exactly at the forefront of your story, but I would love to get your reaction to some of that. Yeah, I think that was a big reason why we were chosen to be on the race as well. It's just to, I mean, there's not too many people in our situation kind of, you know, black, educated, in tech. There are not that many black people in tech. That is a unicorn of a find. So, I mean, having that representation and, and you know, even afterwards, we were talking with some of the producers and they were talking about like how we're a good inspiration to their kids, right? Just kind of seeing someone like them on TV, especially something like reality TV, like Survivor, Amazing Race, where, you know, a lot of them are, you know, straight white couples or straight white males or anything so, such as that. So, um, yeah, it's good to have representation. Them. Well, I want to finish off by having you two look inward because we got a little bit of like, you know, the storyline of Greg is uh, learning th that he can be his own person in such a, a great way. But even honing in on that further, I want to talk about what you learned about the other person. What would you each say is the thing you learned the most racing around the world with your brother? John, let's start with you. I, it, it's funny because we were traveling around the world, seeing all these places, but the, the way that was kind of new for me to see was Gregory like meeting the the teams, the 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 cast and how he interacted with them and and seeing his like social game, but just like how he is socially as a person um with new people and how he like showcases himself to the world. Um, I think it was it was new to meet people at the same time with him and just see him be such a delight and have people fall in love with him over the season um as as teammates, I think was just like super special, yeah. What about you, Greg? Yeah, it's it's because Johnny and I, you know, we know each other pretty well, so it's 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 hard to like learn something new. But um, I would say for Johnny, just his approach to issues. Johnny is, I always knew he was very logical. Like that was our biggest point of tension growing up is that I'm more emotional and he's more logical. And so kind of seeing that play out in a project, because I know you know how that works as far as like okay who's gonna take out the trash or like you know just general day-to-day -day things but yeah. you know we've never worked together before right like we've never had a job together and this felt like we had a job together it felt like we had a project we had like a, a goal together and so seeing his approach you know very logically was was fun to see it was inspirational yeah, yeah. i feel like on board games with teams are usually broken up and we don't get to work together so it was nice to showcase it a little bit yeah last thing i want to ask you get a call for an all winner season of the amazing race are you coming back or are you trying to retire on top kidding me <laughs> kidding me and not only are who would we come back i i genuinely think we have a very good chance of winning <laughs> very very good chance very good yeah i think we'd both take it up in a heartbeat and we're patient we'll wait if it's season 40 season 45 we'll stay in shape we're ready yeah i'll listen let's manifest it let's make it happen so we can make you That's two millionaires you now you can each earn a million. <laughs> yeah, yeah. rival with survivors. With the survivors. Exactly. Well, thank you both, as always, for not only taking the time to talk with me, but like for everything you brought this season. Again, like your lightness and your consistency was so incredible. Getting to watch you two kind of like come into your own and just never look back once you hit India. <laughs> it was so cool to watch. And again, uh, even though it wasn't at the forefront, I think what you were talking about in terms of representation and getting to showcase your success in a bit of a, a marginalized capacity, I think was so awesome. And I, I hope the response has been good from that. And just from your, your, you know, general portrayal on reality TV, I'm so glad this ended up happening. Uh, both your winnings, obviously, and getting the chance to talk today. Thank you so much. And thank you for being so passionate about this show. It's been awesome, like hearing you and other recaps, like go through this and analyze it. I've just been able to geek out this season. So thank you for giving this community and this platform. Oh, well, thank you. The geeking is very much mutual. Uh, all right. Well, I'll, I'll let you guys uh, to the rest of your interviews and the beautiful skyline behind you. But all the best. And congrats again, gentlemen. Thank Thanks, you. Mike. Have a good one. Bye.